Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of video tutorials on safe and effective management of latent tuberculosis infection in community settings. I'm Justin Denham, the Medical Director of the Victorian Tuberculosis Program, and I'm delighted that you're thinking about how you can engage with this important topic. This series of talks will provide an overview of the diagnosis and management of latent TB, with a particular focus on Australian general practice settings. We'll review what latent TB is and get familiar with understanding who should be tested, how to interpret test results, and what to do once a person has been diagnosed. This will include guidance on getting patients started on latent TB treatment, as well as appreciating which patients should be referred for management or more assessment elsewhere. I hope that, whether you've had some involvement with managing latent TB before or not, these talks will give you confidence in how to approach this topic for your patients. Throughout these talks, we'll keep returning to this flowchart, which summarizes the approach that we'll be using. The starting point is to think about which of your patients is at risk for having latent TB, then offering a test where it's appropriate. When a person has a positive test, those who are most likely to benefit safely from treatment can be offered a course of antibiotic therapy. While at any stage in this process, you can refer for specialist management if there are issues or uncertainties. This is a pathway designed to identify those who will get benefit from treatment and be at low risk of significant side effects, and to help you in thinking about how you can keep your patients free from TB over the course of their lives. Let's start with some background to help us think about who in Australia is at risk of latent TB infection. Tuberculosis is caused by infection with Mycobacterium tuberculosis. When a person has tuberculosis in the lungs, they can cough and aerosolize those organisms, which others around them can breathe in. Now, some people can quickly go on to become sick themselves, but most people with a normal immune system are able to contain the infection with a cellular immune response. People who've done this have latent TB infection, which means that there are still live TB organisms in the lungs, but they're inactive and not causing damage with no symptoms and no risk of the infection being passed to others. However, over the course of their lives, people with latent TB are at risk of TB reactivation and becoming sick themselves later on. Now, when people do become sick with TB, it can be a very serious issue. About half of all TB cases happen in the lungs, which causes damage and risk of spreading further. TB can also cause disease anywhere in the body, uh, including meningitis, osteomyelitis, and infertility from genitourinary disease. Even straightforward cases of TB need at least six months of treatment, with six to 12 tablets each day. And while TB is curable with those antibiotics, even here in Australia, people do continue to die of TB. It's a disease that has a big impact on people and their families. And so opportunities to prevent it are very worthwhile. So who does get TB in Australia? Well, by global standards, our rates are low, particularly in people who are born here in Australia. Around 90% of people who get active TB in Australia have been born overseas, primarily in countries with much higher risk of TB exposure. We have state and territory TB programs which work to identify anyone exposed locally. And a combination of those programs and small numbers overall mean that people living in Australia are quite unlikely to get infected locally. If we look at the risk of getting sick with TB after migrating from a high prevalence country, we can see that the highest risk is in the first few years after arriving, with half of all cases diagnosed in the first six years. That risk continues to stay high lifelong though, and even 30 or 35 years after arrival, people still have significant risk of becoming ill. Another way to look at this shows us that the cumulative risk of TB continues to rise over decades. And by the time someone migrating from Vietnam or India has been in Australia for 30 years, close to 3% will have developed TB, which is a substantial burden for them and also for the community. Bringing this all together with data from the Australian National Census, we estimate that there are now more than 1.1 million people with latent TB living here, which is just over 5% of the total population. Over 90% were born overseas, which means that over 17% of all overseas-born Australians have latent TB infection. So given that, who should we be routinely testing for latent TB? Well, there are a few groups where we don't need to think so much about their previous risk of exposure, 
The most obvious of these are students and healthcare workers who often have occupational requirements to be tested, even if they are at low risk. There are also people who would be at extremely high risk of TB disease if they were infected, including people living with HIV and those preparing for TNF-alpha inhibitor therapy or bone marrow transplant. All of these people should be tested, and by and large, they're going to be managed in specialist or high caseload clinical settings. You also don't need to test people who think they've been exposed to a case of TB in Australia, as there are TB programs in all jurisdictions who handle this, including making sure that tests happen at the right time after exposure. Where you should be focusing on is your patients who have migrated to Australia, particularly from countries where there are high rates of TB. As we've seen, the highest risk of getting sick is early on, and so the best time to test is as soon as possible after migration, in order to get the most benefit out of preventative treatment. The risk is lifelong, though, and so it's worthwhile to be thinking about testing people, even if they have been in Australia for a long time. Wrapping up this first talk, we've seen that the risk of having latent TB in Australia is very closely connected to the country in which people were born, particularly for countries with high rates of TB disease. Testing for latent TB in migrants to Australia is high yield, with over 17% likely to have infection. People with latent TB are at long-term risk of progressing to become sick, with the highest risk in the first few years after arrival. While they have latent TB, though, they have no symptoms or signs of infection, and general practitioners thinking to do a test for latent TB may be the only opportunity they have for getting in early to prevent illness. This is about preserving and promoting the long-term health of Australians born overseas, and community health care workers of all disciplines have a critical role in encouraging awareness and testing for latent TB.